Well, the markets were up because Treasury yields were down today. Remember, the Treasury yields spiked really high over the last couple of days, hitting a multi-decade high. But here we are still in the month of October. And as I said at the beginning of the month, October may also be known as October because October has traditionally been a bear market killer month. We know that back in 2022, that was the perfect time to buy and the markets have essentially been pulling down since July. There's a lot of reset in a lot of big tech and there is been some quick movement to the upside and I still think that we're going to hit all of the targets that I gave you guys in the levels of resistance and support that I gave you guys last week. Now the big question is is, is this up move going to last? What do the markets look like now? Where are they going? Well, I'm just going to tell you that we've had a pretty strong push up over the last couple of days, and we are now pushing up against the top of the range. So I don't expect a continued breakthrough right now. I'm expecting a little bit of a pullback, and I'm going to go through some of the trades that I either just got out of or I'm getting into, but all of them are opportunities. So let's just take a minute. Let's go into the heat map of the S&P 500 and get a general idea of how most stocks were doing. As you guys can see that mostly everything was green, we see that Apple, Google, Microsoft were in the gray. They were kind of cooling off because they had already been moving up the last couple of days, and that could be signaling. I always like to keep Keep one eye on Apple. When Apple cools off, it tells us that the overall market might have some cool off coming. If we go over to the heat map of crypto, we see that it's actually a pretty red day. And I've often noticed that Bitcoin can occasionally give us an advanced signal of where uh, the overall market might be going because Bitcoin and crypto trades 24 hours. And sometimes if it goes red, it kind of tells me that it's possible that the overall market might pull back. And some of you might think, Josh, is that's ridiculous. It doesn't work perfectly. But like I said, if uh, Bitcoin spikes green, at night and the overall crypto markets going up oftentimes it's telling me that the following day might be a good day for the Nasdaq right now it's all red uh, going into the close and so that tells me it's just another potential confirmation that we might get a little cool off in the markets so I'm gonna go into a play on Mara because I was spending some time in the charts and I think that Bitcoin could have a fake out move. Right now, everybody's expecting it to drop because it's up against a descending line of resistance. It's up against a bearish triangle. And it wouldn't surprise me if Bitcoin did something different than it was expected. Because you know the market makers, they love to wipe out liquidity for people, the bears. They get trapped. They load up too soon, not giving the market enough time to confirm the move down. They try to get ahead of the move. They load up too early and the market makers snatch away their liquidity by giving it a last pump fake up and then it tends to move down. And considering all of that, I was looking at the Mara chart and I found something very interesting that I know you guys are gonna to wanna to see because studying these charts gives us an ideal point of entry and it also gives us a game plan. So I've got a new game plan on Mara that I'm gonna trade. Hopefully I'll make some money on it. I'm gonna share it with you guys today. All of these trades I give you guys so far in advance so you have time to do your own study, your own due diligence, and consider whether it's some risk that you might consider taking. And uh, But you know in advance what I'm going to do. And then I come back out here and I share with you guys how it worked out. But this is the Stocks with Josh show. As always, I want to thank everybody that already hit the like because so many of you guys hit the like the minute the video starts. If you're part of the fam today, just throw a heart and say hi in the comments. I'd love to see you guys pop up. Thank you guys for being here today. If you're new to the page, don't delay to hit that subscribe because we're making money on Stocks with Josh. All right, guys, I want to cover the Rivian play. I want to point out exactly what we talked about and where it could go over the next couple of days because I actually did not sell all of my options. I made thousands of dollars and I sold all of my call options in one of my accounts, but I also bought a handful in another account and I held them. So there is the opportunity for another push up a little higher. I was able to get over 100% profit in this play, but I might be able to get up to 150 or 200 depending on what Rivian does. I'm going to review the chart with you guys real quick. On uh, today, I will tell you guys that when it went up today, it actually went up with 50% more volume. And so what you need to understand is that when the price moves up, you want to look at volume to see if it confirms that up move. And when the volume rises on price rising, then you've got confluence and then you might be able to 
determine that we're going to have a continuation of the price movement up. So it's not a guarantee, but it's always something I look at. So today there was confluence between the price and the momentum. So on Saturday's video, I told you guys that we had a potential of backtesting support at 2050. Even if Rivian's going to go down significantly from here, it would make a ton of sense to backtest one of the critical levels of support at $20.50, anywhere between $20 and $21. And I thought that that would be a realistic bare minimum backtest move. But I also pointed out that we might not get all the way there. We would at least get to $19.90. And today, on Monday, we went down to the $17 range exactly as I thought. That's where I loaded up. And then today, we moved all the way up to $19.98. That was the high of the day. So I sold uh, more than half of my position, about two-thirds, still holding the last one-third. And even if we didn't go all the way up to 2050, I could still sell those at a break, even if we had a strong pullback, and I will have locked in the majority of my gains. So I'm very happy with it. I would love to hear from you guys if you followed me on the Rivian play and if you made some money. All right, I also wanted to give you guys a warning about the Discord that I'm in. Uh, there's always people People impersonating me. They'll use my name. They'll say stocks with Josh, but they'll put in different hyphenations, periods between the stocks, the with and the Josh, or commas, or a period at the end. They'll use some combination that's different than my name, and they're trying to, they'll ask you to befriend them. They'll DM you and say, you know, accept my friend request, and then they're going to try to get some money from you. It's all about trying to get you to send some of your hard-earned money to them. They're going to promise you a class or some trade secret or something like that. Guys, I don't have any trade secrets that I'm holding back from you. On this page, I'm giving you guys my trade setups in advance. I will never DM you. I will never ask you for money. So don't get scammed. Don't fall for that. All right, the next trade that I got into today, and it's actually one that you guys have been asking me a lot to cover Recently, you wanted more fresh technicals, and that's Eli Lilly. If we remember back on that heat map of the S&P 500, Eli Lilly was having a nice pop-up today. And I've covered this in the past. Now, I would say that in regards to Eli Lilly, my overall trade plan has worked out exactly as I presented it, except for the fact that I did not enter or scale my position as much as I wanted uh, because I felt that there was the risk of a breakout move when Eli Lilly was beginning to come down, I was just worried that we could break back up and retest the high, but we never did. It came all the way down and I had predicted that we would hit the 50 day moving average at bare minimum and bounce and that's exactly what happened. And now we've moved all the way back up to the top of the trade range. And I'm gonna give you guys where the new resistance is and what I think will happen. But let me just start off by telling you that I entered into some starter puts today. I'm up right now around 9% on them, but we don't have confirmation that this is gonna go down. I think tomorrow or maybe the following day will give us a clear picture picture of direction. One of the signals that does give me a little bit of a bearish view is, is that we went up $10 today on lower volume. And so there was not confluence on a continued move up. It could be signaling the reversal. That's one of the reasons why I entered more into puts. Always, always look at volume. And so I see resistance on Eli Lilly at 587 and 90, but I also see that there's a second level of resistance at 595.90, and it's very possible, like I said, for us to push up to that. That was the original back test that I had predicted when Eli Lilly had hit $600. Now, in the last five days, it's moved up hard, so I would expect some sort of a cool off, and I think it could easily come back to 568 before continuing its move higher. But if it failed at 568, then I would be watching for it to come all the way back to 548, where I would likely take profits. Up at the current price, I'm looking for a lower high, which would confirm a longer bearish trend down. But we need to be cautious as bears on Eli Lilly. I'm going to give you sort of a bull case and a bearish case for you to consider so that we have at least both perspectives and we're not being too emotional or too excited about profiting from it going down because recently is regarding the bullish view, Wells Fargo raised their price target to $650. 
And the chart overall is bullish because it reasonably pulled back and bounced again off of the 50 MA. It has not broken down. It would not really be a broken down chart until that 50 MA crosses beneath the 100 and then potentially the 200. At the moment, the chart is still bullish, so be careful. We're simply, I'm simply trying to take advantage of some of the cool off moments after the powerful up moves. One of the other indicators that I will be watching for will be a rejection candle. That's simply a candle with a very tall wick on the top, which tells me that once it hit a certain price point, that the uh, sellers began to pick up speed. I'm gonna be watching for a rejection candle. I wouldn't say that we have one right now, which which means we could absolutely make another push higher. And I would get out of my put position if we were to push above $595 with high volume, I would get out because I would assume that we're going to go between the $600 to $650 range. But I don't really have any reason to think that at the moment. So if we take the bearish view, I wanted to point out that there has been an increase in bearish sentiment. Because if you look at this chart, you're going to see that there's been an increase in bearish sentiment because there's been a growing short interest on Eli Lilly. And I think that's because it's had a massive run-up. And so people are beginning to realize that that up move is not sustainable and they're beginning to take positions like I am looking for it to draw down for a while. And this initial move from 600 back down to the 50 MA is really just the signs of distribution. Now we've had another move up. If we get a, a lower high, then we can get another violent move even lower than the 50 MA, and that would be a nice profit. Again, I would love to hear from you guys if you've made any money following along on put or shorts of Eli Lilly. If it's been profitable for you, please tell me in the comment section. I love to get that feedback. All right, before I get into some technicals on Mara, if you are a new trader and you're looking for better trade tools and the opportunity to get some free stock, there is an offer from the Moomoo Trading Platform, which is a zero cost to trade platform that's available in the US, Australia, and Canada. And right now in the United States, they're offering up to 16 free stock for opening and funding an account. But the very best part of Moomoo, there's two things that I love. I, I really enjoy all of their technicals, but in particular, their earnings calendar. As we're getting into earnings seasons, it's going to become even more relevant. But the second thing I love about Moomoo is I host a free chat group on the app called Stock Josh Fam. So get better trade tools, get your free stuff, and then come find that chat group where we can continue to talk about these markets. All right, when we go and talk about Mara today, let's just make it really simple. For one, it went up today on 27% lower volume. It's had a nice little back test move up to the 100 and 200 day moving average. Technically, we're beneath all of the moving averages, which means that this is largely pretty bearish. If we do get a fake out move from Bitcoin, we could see that Mara could yet again pop up to at least $9.90. And here's what I want you guys to hear. Right now, I will take some risk for some puts down lower on Mara, especially if we get a, a move up and it gets a price that moves higher, I'm gonna be looking to take some puts because I see something very interesting in the charts that I think is almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. There is a very clear inverse head and shoulders forming on Mara. And so right now we formed the left shoulder at around $5.00. Then we moved all the way back up to $20, and $20 is the neckline. Remember that. Then we came all the way down to $3, and then we moved all the way back up to $20. This thing is a wild ride to trade. Tons of money-making opportunity in Mara, and it's been that way for years. It's had incredible moves, and it continues to be a payday. Now, I really believe that at some point we're going to move all the way down to that $5 level and we're going to make that right shoulder of the inverse head and shoulders. And that's where I think it's going to be safer to load up. And so I wanted you guys to have a target. I wanted you to have my target. That's going to be my point of entry. And I think that's going to be the safest place to get in. And so if I want to be very clear. Right now, I'm imagining that we could get a fake out move up and we could have a second double top move to $9.90 for Mara. And then I'm going to be loading up some puts to ride it down to $5. And I'm going to tell you guys the time frame that I see all of this happening. Now, I don't have a crystal ball. This is just, um, you know, it's a guessing by looking at the charts and kind of considering past price action and what's forming. I really believe that we're going to see 
the phase two of the Bitcoin bull run begin after November of this year. So after the weekend of Thanksgiving, I think that Bitcoin is going to begin to trend up and enter into what's going to be seen as phase two of the Bitcoin bull run that's going to lead up to the halving event in April of 2024, which is going to be the markup phase. And I believe that between now and sometime in November, we're going to bleed off all the way to $5, form that second shoulder in the inverse head and shoulders. And at that point, I'm going to want to ride it all the way back up. I'm going to load up on calls. I'm going to give it some time because I could be off by 30 days. It could actually turn around in December and not November. But I'm going to give myself some time on some extended calls, probably out into 2024, and I'm going to be looking to write it all the way up back to $20. Now, it's very, very possible that we'll see some resistance at 20, but it wouldn't shock me if we back tested 16 and then made another attempt at 20 in the months ahead in 2024, ultimately pushing higher. I've given you guys the target before that at bare minimum, I see Mara potentially going to $40. And, uh, and I think that if we got back up to 20 and we vacillated for a while and eventually broke through that neckline, it would technically confirm a move to $40. So you guys have my total game plan. And, and I've been a little reluctant to give some hard technicals on Mara because I wasn't exactly sure what how low it could go because there's a lot to consider that $8 would be the low. There's a ton of support there. But because of identifying this pattern in the charts, I'm now more confident for myself to wait for it to get down to five to load up. And I think that that's going to put us somewhere at the end of November. That's how it's looking to me based on the charts. Let me know what you guys see in the charts. If that scares you that Mara would hit five bucks, uh, let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys, but I think all of this we'll know in time. Uh, that's about it for my show today. I hope that this helps you guys. We've covered uh, what happened with Rivian. We made some money. There's still some money to be made there. We covered Eli Lilly. We're going to be looking for puts, riding it back down to at least 550 is my target. And we've got a long-term plan on Mara. I am going to talk about APLD next simply because so many of you guys have asked me about it. And yes, the chart is interesting. And yes, it's going to be choosing a direction very, very soon here, and I will let you guys know, uh, ideally in my next video. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you liked the video and you learned something, then please hit that like. Throw a comment in the comment section for me, and if you want to participate in this trade journey moving forward, you got to hit the subscribe and the YouTube all notification bell. Love you guys. Peace and blessings. We'll see you in the next video.